Hello everybody, welcome and thank you for watching the Universal Observations channel. On this channel I try to show you some tips and tricks and techniques as I'm learning in the, and uh, growing in the field of astrophotography. In this video I'm going to show you the steps that led up to me finally getting an image of M101, the pinwheel galaxy that I'm reasonably happy with. This is my equipment uh, set up as I started off on this journey. Um, uh, Canon 6D camera, William Optics, Zemastar 61, and the iOptron Skyguider Pro. And uh, over several nights, uh, different sessions, this is the kind of things that I was getting. I'm not real happy with these. And um, you'll see the third one here. Um, all kind of, uh, I got the image, but uh, there were some problems here. And those problems were... Uh, I'm in a Bortle Class 6, so very light polluted skies. I didn't do a great job balancing or polar aligning, and I just didn't get enough exposure time uh, to pull in this pretty faint object, at least from where I'm at. So I decided to go with a uh, CLS filter, and I used this SV Boney uh, CLS filter. And I actually reached out to them and, and asked how to pronounce it. And Rita sent me back this uh, sound bite on how to pronounce SV Boney. So those of you who are looking and understanding, uh, uh, this is how you pronounce it. But there was a problem with this filter when I got it. The threads in this area are not, uh, there's not enough threads to thread it onto my uh, rig and then put, uh, put it in here between the T-ring and the... Uh, the flattener, there just wasn't enough thread. So I came up with a hack to get it in. And if you're interested in seeing that hack, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll make another video specifically for that. Now here's what I ended up getting. One image you can see in the green circle is, is where the galaxy is actually at. And uh, as I tried to step up from 60 second exposures to 90 second exposures, not so great. I was starting to get star trails, so I couldn't really get very good exposures. So I watched uh, Peter Zelinka's uh, uh, video on how to do sky guiding with the Ioptron Skyguider Pro, and I ended up getting this uh, uh, camera and uh, uh, guide scope, and then I needed to, to mount it. So I got yet another piece of equipment from SV Boney, uh, their dovetail base, and that fit perfectly on the uh, Skyguider, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, William Optics Zenith Star 61. So this is a great mounting for uh, that. Now the uh, camera uh, and guide scope are on the other side of this, but you can see that I'm shooting pretty much straight up for the Pinwheel Galaxy. I've got two counterweights. It's just, I think, way too heavy for what I'm trying to do. So I ended up taking off some uh, weights, and you'll see that in a second here. So I started, okay, got the, the tripod and the uh, Altaz base, there for the uh, Skyguider Pro, and then uh, make sure that I level that, and this uh, tripod that I have is a nice ball mount, so uh, uh, that allowed for that real easy. So here I put the, the Skyguider Pro on, and I uh, make sure that that thing, the shoulder of that butts up against the Alt-Az base. That, base. that makes it pretty secure. Tighten that thing down, because that's going to be the foundation. Now when I store my scope, I, I put it in this uh, jumbo hefty bag, uh, with these silica packets in there to wick out any moisture. Now here's where I remounted the, the guide scope, took off the dovetail plate. Uh, I found that I knew about where the balance point was and got that camera around to the bottom. Uh, and, and if you look in, in this um, uh, video, and I'm going to stumble around and put that CLS filter it's a little tough to do with one hand, and maybe I'll, uh, for future videos, get a, a head-mounted camera. Uh, but I'm going to show you a little bit about how this uh, uh, guide scope mounted on here. You can see that I've got the scope is ba basically upside down, and uh, the, the, the scope doesn't care what it or which orientation it is. So uh, I'm trying to get more weight closer to uh, the base of, of the uh, declination bracket on the... Uh, Skyguider Pro, so get more weight off of there. And so here you can see I put that CLS filter in. Uh, I've probably tightened that down a little bit too much because I ended up having to use some filter wrenches to get that uh, out of there. And then here you can see a, this, the scope mounted, and uh, once I have that, the uh, plug in the cable for the ST port, ST4 port, but then I've got cable management issues. So I found on Amazon these nice little Velcro strips. I got a hundred pack of these things. Uh, and we'll put some of the links for this equipment uh, down in the uh, comments uh, down below. 
next, I grabbed my Canon 6D uh, with the red dot finder. Now, this red dot finder is maybe a little bit too heavy, but I find that a red dot finder really helps me, uh, especially in my Bortle 6, uh, it really helps me find what objects I'm looking for. So then I pull off the cap, and uh, you can see the uh, uh, that I like to keep those caps on for the very last minute. Uh, I then put in the uh, uh, USB cable for the uh, Canon 6D, which I recently had a problem with. The uh, uh, USB port uh, kind of uh, became unsoldered, and I sent it back into Canon, and they returned it, the whole thing within uh, seven days. Great, great support there. Plugging in the... Um, uh, Canon camera and the USB cable directly from the uh, AIS 120mm-s and then I waited for it to get dark and uh, uh, I'm using SharpCap here uh, I found that it was well worth the uh, $10 a year uh, to uh, not only get focus for the guide scope uh, like I'm doing here I had some problems. I think I was actually doing this a, a little bit too early in the evening and couldn't get a, a really good focus. I ended up getting a better focus later, but uh, uh, quite honestly, this was my very first time using this. And if you look real close, I don't think I have the gain set to auto mode. Uh, so I was struggling with that, but I finally got it. And so here I'm using uh, the polar alignment feature for um, uh, sharp cap. Now I... Um, in previous videos, I, I've done a um, kind of an exhaustive polar alignment visually, and uh, I was able to get pretty good with that. But this this sharp cap uh, uh, polar alignment really lets you zero in. Uh, if you haven't seen this, there's some great videos uh, online. I'm not going to go into details of exactly how to do this, but uh, I had some fairly long uh, uh, frame rates here. So what you have to be careful of is you have to let that kind of settle down and take a couple of frames before you go moving, uh, your equipment again and trying to adjust that. And, uh, that can be a little bit, uh, you gotta have some patience when you're doing that. And, uh, but, but, uh, as you'll see here in a, a couple of seconds, I actually got it narrowed into at least the good range. And I think at one point I had an, an excellent range. Um, and that's, that's probably pretty good with what I can do with the uh, uh, tolerance level or what little bit of slop that I have in uh, my entire mounting, uh, especially with the weight uh, that I'm doing. I think I'm well over uh, seven pounds now on the, uh, the Skyguider Pro, which I think has a weight limit of 11. So uh, I apologize for those uh, metrics. I haven't done the conversion. Uh, maybe I'll try to throw that in with text, but you'll see here that I got uh, uh, within the good range. And uh, so then I switched over to the uh, PhD2 uh, guiding. And uh, this has been an amazing uh, discovery. And I, I, again, another shout out to Peter Zelenka for uh, putting up his video on, on the um, uh, Skyguider Pro 2 and PH2, PhD2 guiding. Uh, that's really what inspired me to do this, and and um, really what it allowed me to do was go from sixty to to sixty second, or maybe at the most ninety second exposures, and uh, really get into. I mean, I was doing for for the images that you're going to see at the end here, five minute long exposures with no star trails. I probably could have even gone longer. Um, but I, I really think this is going to make a huge difference in what I'm able to capture uh, in the future. And as I learn from this, and there's some tips and, and tricks that I've seen recently uh, on on how to best set up the uh, PhD uh, PhD two guiding. And uh, as you'll see here, it started to narrow in a little bit as I started to mess with the settings. Uh, I then switch over to Backyard EOS as I've got a Canon camera, uh, connect up to that. And Backyard EOS is uh, just a great automation software for doing this. Uh, I'm able to, to do focus. And here's kind of the tail end of my session. I'm, you can see here I'm doing 300 seconds or five minute long exposures. But I got some problems with my dark frames. I only ended up getting two dark frames out of this, uh, which I don't think is really enough. Uh, but, uh, this is the results that I got. And, um, uh, again, this is, uh, about 20 exposures at five minutes with 800 ISO from a Bortle class six. And, um, 
Uh, I, I'd really like to uh, thank everybody for uh, watching this, and uh, uh, please subscribe if you can, comment, uh, happy to answer any questions, and uh, uh, look forward to entertaining you in the future. Thanks, and clear skies.